In the one o'clock car or handicap at Sandown, number two, Blue Flambeau, was withdrawn. The result, first was number three, Festuary, six to one. Second, number nine, Pinty Nippy, two to one favorite. Third, number one, Citergy, 100 to eight. Fourth, number six, Mr. Crumbles, 20 to one. The distance is two lengths, a left. Mother, what are you doing? Calculating my winnings, darling. Well, wouldn't it be easier if you took your gloves off? Probably, but I haven't finished the silver. Oh, I'll do that later. So, what shall we do for supper? It's in the oven. Oh, you've been on your feet all day, and all I've done is talk to Anna about her design. Is she settled in all right? Yes, I think so. She was a bit nervous at first when she realised what was involved, but uh, once we started talking in detail, she seemed to relax. She's got some wonderful ideas. She's very young, though. She's got no track record. Won't that count against her with Sir Edward Fear's committee? No, I don't think so. No, once they see her designs, they're going to be as excited about her as I am. So, what's the problem? I didn't say there was a problem. Oh, come on, darling. I know when you're worried. Oh, it's Ken Masters. I just can't seem to get rid of him. I thought he'd accepted the fact that everything was over between you. Oh, oh it's not that. He's still got an interest in the boutique, and he won't let me buy him out. I see. I don't need him anymore, Mother. But as long as we're partners, I'll never be free of him. Uh, they should be in before the tide turns. Good evening, Admiral. Mr. Roll, you come to see me? Uh, yes, yes, I have. Yeah. Oh, uh, I'll be right back, Jack. Uh, can I offer you a drink? Uh, no, thank you, no, no. I'll take two. Oh, thank you. And what can I do for you, Mr. Roll? Well, I was wondering if you've made your mind up about the boat yet. No, as I told you earlier, I need time to think about it. Well, I, I don't want to pressurize you, Admiral. But... No, I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> but, uh, you see, the situation is we're likely to be very busy with orders during the summer. And at the moment, we've got some spare capacity at the yard. So I noticed. Hmm. So, if you, if you were to commit yourself now, I could offer you a substantial discount, say, what, 5, 10, 12 percent, depending on the size of the boat. Things are that bad, are they? Sorry? Oh, come on, Mr. Rolfe, I'm aware of your situation. The pending court case, the question mark hanging over your partner. There's no question mark as far as I'm concerned. I'm quite certain Tom Howard will be completely exonerated. Well, I hope you're right. In any case, Tom didn't design the boat you saw this afternoon. We built that model long before he joined the yard. Yes, I was most impressed. But I'm afraid I'm not prepared to commit myself at the moment, not even for a substantial discount. Now, if you'll excuse me. Well, what'd you make of him? Sorry, Charles, I just didn't pick up anything. That's a pity. I was depending on you. Look, what does it matter if your father's money is involved? This deal is far too important to be jeopardized by your paranoia. Oh, you think I'm paranoid? Thank you, yes. And I think it's affecting your judgment. You're sure about that, but you're not sure about Grunwald. Oh, Charles, what exactly is it you're afraid of? Supposing your father's a secret investor, so what? It'd be a deal breaker. Why? Because I've built up my business holdings without touching a single penny of his money. I don't intend to start now. His money would be in the consortium, not you. I don't want him to have a piece of it, that's all. You're being totally unreasonable. You realize that, don't you? In fact, I don't think you resent your father at all. I think you're still trying to earn his seal of approval. Good night, Avril. Good night. So it's all agreed. A million at half a percent over interbank rates. That's right. Whiskey? Oh, thank you, thank you. And how did you manage to persuade your board? <laughs> it wasn't easy. I actually wanted to know what was in it for the bag. <laughs> and what did you tell them? I offered them you. Me? Well, your business, or a large proportion of it. Well, I never agreed to that. I they demanded a quid pro quo, Edward. You'll have to sever your connection with Charles. You're still refusing your offer, then? Yes, he seems to think he can do better on his own. So we're going to have to show him the error of his ways. You and I are going to teach him a very expensive lesson. Mm -hmm. 